Okay, welcome back to another episode of PT Meal Podcast, a buffet of play, therapies, movement, exercises, activities, and leisure, all packed in a hearty conversation of the physical therapy profession and practice. I am Johan De La Paz, your host. Welcome back again to the show. So, um, in the past episodes, we've talked to physical therapists in their specialties, in their areas of practice, and for this episode, we're gonna we have someone who's a uh, Uh, another stakeholder of physical therapy in the other end naman of physical therapy is the, the patient side magandang marinig natin yung side ng ng patients kasi we've been you know that's that's our main stakeholder sa kanila natin na binubuhos yung effort natin your your our education and our skills so um i would like to welcome uh, in my show sir luis and ma'am archel welcome po sa podcast Hello, thank, thank you, you for the you. invitation. And so, um, so yeah, ang pag-uusapan natin would be the collaboration of uh, physical therapists and their patients or clients. But before we we really dive into the topic, could you introduce us to yourselves first? A short, probably, introduction so that we have an idea who you are and what you do. So again, let's start with Mom Archel first. All right. Uh, thank you, Sir Johan, for inviting us. And yeah, um, I'm Arshel Jane Chuseco, Kalia Chuseco, and currently I'm uh, a licensed physical therapist, obviously. <laughs> and my my expertise is of um, neuro rehabilitation, geriatrics, and pediatrics as well. And currently, as well, currently I am a m- member of the faculty of the USDCRS. So I've been. I've been practicing for almost two decades, okay, both in clinics and academe. And um, also, I've, I've been doing a lot. <laughs> I'm in the table. So I'm also part, I'm also, I'm currently <clears throat> the um, vice chair of the Neuro SIG of the Philippine Physical Therapy Association and a member of uh, the Council of CPD Monitoring in Philippine Regulation Commission. So, ayan, pretty personal. <laughs> So, wala akong pinagagawa. So, yeah, but basically, um, my core profession is, of course, of course, a physical therapist and a teacher. Yan. Okay. Ay, busy, busy po, Ma'am, Ma'am Arcel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Sir Luis. Okay. Hello, guys. My name is um, Luis Gloda. And uh, I, um, unfortunately, I acquired an ABM. Um, I'm the patient of our shell, the best PT in the universe. <laughs> And uh, um, I am um, 45 years old. I'm, uh, I'm an architect. All right. So um, you mentioned, Sir, Sir Luis, that you had an AVM. Could you, um, either of you, could you give us a, a background on what happened what was the neurologic event that happened to to sir louis you can answer sir louis or mom arcel maybe um let's get her to start then me oh um i had a um, raptured avm mm-hmm. um last october 25th 2020 actually so and then yeah That actually happened to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, raptured ABM it means um, um, a vessel in a vessel in my brain raptured mm-hmm. because um, it's um, it's tangled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you, uh, yeah, I, yes, I'd like to expand the solution mm-hmm. since um, prior to treating our patients, part of it would be an initial evaluation. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Anyway, um, and then Sir Ben would would be um, of course, explaining further what happened to his journey. So Sir Ben was referred to me last November 2020 because of a ruptured ABM, particularly on the front of parietal areas. And then, oh uh, yeah, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> mahina ba? <laughs> okay, again, okay, <laughs> again, okay. <laughs> Ayan, usually, pag may mami gumaganyan na po. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. All right, so um, Sir Luis was referred to me uh, last November 
because of a ruptured hemorrhagic type of stroke and um, uh, because of uh, ruptured AVM. And uh, the findings, to, um, the findings revealed that it was actually involvement of the frontoparietal areas. So, ano siya, medyo massive, no? And then, um, particularly the parietal area. So, when I first saw him, he was actually discharged. He, got, he, he underwent um, inpatient rehabilitation in the hospital for, I guess, about two to three weeks. Wherein um, he started, wherein he started, <laughs> okay, wherein he started the, the physical therapy program. And then by the time he was referred to me, um, he was actually, he still has difficulty of moving around and all. Um, and and um, he, he we, 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 we began immediately the, the program for him to be able to get back to his normal, near normal state. And so that's the journey. That's, that's the start of our very interesting journey. So currently also, um, he's suffering from a homonymous hemianopsia, which is um, given the fact that he has been suffering from that, he was able to as achieve a very remarkable improvement. Mm -hmm. And currently as well, she, he is still suffering from some somatosensory deficits. So medyo technical yung sinasabi ko, no? but I guess the physical therapy community would understand it. But to make right. it clear for our other audiences, um, right now, um, right now, cer certain has been suffering from a visual deficit, eye deficit, where in half of his body he cannot really see unless he focuses attention to. And then he still has some um, um, loss or partial, okay, partial loss of sensation, particularly on the left side. Mm -hmm. and, okay, right. that's it. Okay, that's <laughs> it's a physical therapy of. Mm -hmm. Of uh, Sir Nong's, mm -hmm. uh, I call him Sir Nong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's actually the that's actually a brief, that's the brief background of um Sir Nong's mm -hmm. um, in condition. Condition. Yeah. Okay. So given that the presentation, yung weakness, then some sensory deficits, uh, shape difficulty with function, uh, Sir Luis, I don't know. Hindi na kasi namin na itatanong sa mga patients namin to kasi more on ano kami eh, more on physical ganun, ganun. pero in in your um perspective how did that impact your life we don't usually ask patients kasi this eh pero since nasa talk show tayo so okay. it, that kind of event how did that impact your life how did it impact my life mm -hmm. yes yes sir um when it comes to what sorry um, when it comes to your um, any aspect of your life, like your work, your family, your leisure. Oh, how did um, how did um, a my AVM affected? Yes, yes, sir. basically my life. Yes, sir. Um, I'll make it short. I'll make it short. Everything actually, mm -hmm. it affected everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, but you know, you can, you can, you can, you can easily, well, not easily, you can actually make that, make that better. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, sad to say that it affected everything in my life, mm -hmm. like okay. my health, because I actually had a very active lifestyle before, mm -hmm. and everything. Everything was gone mm -hmm. since I had this. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. So since, yeah. siempre, um, medyo ano nga yung tanong ko, no? so, <laughs> obvious naman that it, it made, a, made an impact, big impact in your life. What then was your motivation in your, uh, for your rehabilitation at that time? Uh, okay. What motivated me was, what? Uh, that's what I've said. Um, I had a very, very, very active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Very active. So, I really don't want people around me to see me weak mm -hmm. or, you know, being sick. Mm -hmm. That's why that motivated me to really get better as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. gotcha. I don't want them to see me, you know, weak or, mm -hmm. you know, 
Yeah. Just for conversation sake, sir. Ano po yung mga ano niya? Um leisure activities, yung mga recreational activities niya on being active before this. Before? Uh, uh, yes po. And uh, um at sobrang dami. Actually, <laughs> actually all of it eh. Hindi lang kasali yung baseball eh. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, let me... Golf? Mhm. Um enduro biking? Wow. Yeah, boxing? Mhm. Basketball? Swimming. Mm-hmm. Um, what about? Mm-hmm. Rowing. Oh, wow. I was in a I was in a row, rowing team before. Uh-huh. Uh, what about? What about Mas alam mo actually. Super dami. Ano super dami. Um, actually, yun lang. Actually, di na lang. an an avid um gym gym ano uh ano ba oh, religion ko yun eh oh. gym gym in goer fact, actually in fact um before he had the he had the injury with the condition he was actually doing some workout and mm-hmm. um yeah it was boxing no certain he was actually doing boxing yeah boxing or enduro doing... biking mm-hmm. pero actually... boxing yeah mas mahirap yun Mm-hmm. He was actually doing his usual boxing routine at home, and then yun that is that actually triggered. And um, before he used to work out for like for like um two to two times a day, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was in between. Meron pa siyang work, so a very very active lifestyle, which I think in a physical therapy perspective that made an impact in terms of his recovery. Actually, sorry, sorry, my therapy before was before when I started when we started. How many times a week? I think five, right? Or four? Five times. Five times a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, seeing you five a, times a week. No, there was a time we had, um, I think for the three, 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 four, three weeks or four weeks, it was every day. Oh. And seven times, every, seven yeah. times a week. Seven times every day. Wow, every day, every day I see you. Okay, sorry, sorry. It's all right. So Mom Marshall, you when when you first met uh Sir Luis and Chepe, you had your evaluation, your assessment. What was your Um, approach and and plan of care for Sir Sir Lewis's recovery. Okay, that's a very good, interesting question. Mm-hmm. Again, not the physical therapy. When we when we create physical therapy program, it's unique for every patient. Right. And um, one thing that we'll need to consider, a person that I consider, is um, what's the ultimate motivation of the patient? What's his pre-morbid status? And what's the what and um, what's the family's ano um. ultimate goal as well because at the end of the day we have to meet halfway so that's actually one of the things that i considered now given the fact that um sir nong's condition sir ten's condition is actually abm so technically mas madali siya. i mean um there are a higher percentage of people recovering from the condition and that is something i would have to take advantage of So mm-hmm. kaya mabilis yung ano, mabilis yung pace namin. Kasi the moment that we um lag or or um stop, no? So pwedeng maapektuhan yung progress. And given the fact that Sir Nong is young young. So that's another factor that um I also considered. And um I think that's a, that also um can boost his recovery. So is yung sa mga kailangan I one of the one of the things that I also considered And the mere fact that he is um, very active prior to stroke, so that that also um, that also is um, a big consideration with regards to his recovery. That's why when we set our long-term goal, we we made sure that it's um it's at it's at at par with his near normal recovery. And one thing that he mentioned was. He wanted to return to cycling, so yun yung naging outlook ko sa yun yung naging focus mm. namin sa dulo, yan, mm. okay. And um and uh, also other than other than considering the physiologic, pathologic um factors, I also tried to talk to the family, and then um very good um family support, and I think that's um one thing that really 
really um, motivated us both to to eventually eventually um coming to the success of his recovery yon mm-hmm. so of course nandun din yung ano nandun din yung creating programs that are that are um very complicated ayan saka ano eh um kung, ma- kung makikita niyo yung mga videos we actually have a YouTube certain pala certain has actually a YouTube videos of of his um physical therapy and if you can see vlog 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 pala vlog okay <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ayan. And if you can see, no, um, yung program niya is really, really different because it has to be matched according to what his goal would be. Mm-hmm. Yun. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well said. Well said. Well said. <laughs> so, yun, sir, um, the, we we heard um, Mom Archel that she, you know, you collaborate, you you talk and and. Uh, made a plan which is tailor made for you and how how important was that that she talked to you about your goal she talked to you about um what you want at the end of the the rehabilitation and and how did that you know affect your motivation as well so first question would be how important was it was it for you that she was you know able to consider what your goal was and also how did that motivate you in reach, reaching those goals okay um first of all when we started she told me you just have to trust the process and that got stuck in my head so yeah i basically i basically just trust the process um what motivated me is how she dealt with me i mean how she's um dealing with me actually um the way she deals with her patient i mean she goes along with the character of the patient mm-hmm. that's that's hard mm-hmm. that's not easy mm-hmm. <laughs> the patient is i mean should i say crazy i mean she's gonna be crazy too she, she's gonna act crazy too mm-hmm. it's kind of like you jump i jump kind of thing mm-hmm. good and um the way she um did the process is very impressive so i mean she didn't do the process she didn't give me any any programs that that's not gonna fit me or that's not that that i that, that i cannot do mm-hmm. that's why um I'm, I'm really impressed about the way she makes a program and every time every time she sees me she up she updates the program Right, mm-hmm. like she changes the program mm-hmm. to suit my to suit my um my needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. In the universe, I told you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, Pop, ma'am. Yeah, may I also. I thank you for that. Well, sweet mo ngayon na. Hindi ka ganyan na. <laughs> Actually, we do, we just we really so sobrang tagal na namin magkasama. In fact, um, I met when we when we before we started the program, one of the challenge I gave him was that um, kasi nga walking yung problema namin initially. Sabi ko sa kanya, certain I'll be married soon, and can I can I invite you as one of my godfather? Kasi ang ultimate goal namin other than him cycling is to walk down the aisle as one of my mm-hmm. nino. <laughs> But at least I don't know my goal. So, naman, unfortunately because of pandemic hindi siya naka-attend. <laughs> Kasi nga that time that time nagkaroon ng covid surge which is understandable. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so anyway um yun um you really ako as physical, as his PT I'm really blessed kasi nga we bonded ayan nasasakyan niya yung mga jokes namin ng isa't isa so yun lang nga kailangan ko din maging crazy kasi super crazy talaga si Sir Ted easily got yeah uh, okay. <laughs> and easily gets bored yeah uh-huh. that's the thing about it that's the thing about Sir Ted he easily gets bored that's why we have to constantly change the program and all but then there's one thing that he really hated when we had his therapy and that's the treatment for his hand the constraint induced movement therapy so all right so ginawa ko yung CIMP sa kanya because that time he has a caregiver and i took advantage of it 
kasi merong magbabantay. Um, mm-hmm. That program cannot be applied to everyone kasi nga, um, it has to be constantly monitored. So mm-hmm. I think that part of the recovery, yan yung nainis siya. <laughs> Sobra. <laughs> pero, yeah, yeah, pero, um, I think ha, nakatulong ng sobra kasi look at your left hand kasi nakita mo dali yung left hand mo dati dati meron niya mga abnormal series the typical stroke the mm-hmm. typical presentation of stroke pero ngayon nananampal na yan <laughs> <laughs> may pre- may fine prehensions na oh 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 Mm-hmm. Pero kaya ah. na mo nakakasuntok na doon. Yes. <laughs> Ayan. So, so sir, sir, ano, sir Luis, ano po yung mga challenges aside from you didn't like you, the CIMT? Uh, aside from that, ano pa yung mga ibang challenges nyo that you you faced uh, during your recovery? It can be like um, uh, mental or can be physical challenges? Actually, that's a good question. But, pero ano eh? When I, when I, when I, when I don't have my, um, when I didn't have my flap back yet, flap is the, the bone. Mm, okay. My, when it was not back yet, everything for me was like a challenge. It was really hard for me. Everything like CIMT, And all the challenges, we call it challenges. Mm-hmm. We call it challenges, right? Yeah. Yes, we, don't, we, don't. we don't say my hand up. We don't say hand up. We uh, always we say challenges. We mm-hmm. don't say hard. We don't say difficult. Yeah. We say challenges. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so every, every, every challenges that she gives me before, before my flap is back, it's really hard and challenging. I mean, Mahirap eh. Hindi lang, hindi lang CIMT. I didn't have any patience in everything before. Mm-hmm. Everything. Kahit mm-hmm. sa kanya. Wala <laughs> kong Very moody. Uh, nagkaroon siya ng ano, uh, mood instability. Well, it's part. Mm-hmm. Kaya, right. kaya nga, you have to match the the temper. Ganyan. And also, mm-hmm. sir, no, you, can, you can also mention that prior to return your flap you had headaches diba tapos right. um, mm, it constricts our it constricts your program mm-hmm. because i cannot yeah. put my head down and i cannot have pressure in my head yeah. mm-hmm. so parang right. it's like ano a constant building up of pressure inside his head mm-hmm. uh, prior to returning the flap so other than physical physical um challenges Um, emotional and mental challenges are actually part. Of, uh, yeah, actually part of the recovery. Yun. Sir Luis, like I'm curious, because for like with patients um, that had um, emotional ability or emotional instability, were you aware during that time that you are doing that? No. Oh, okay. It's not. Mm-hmm. Where? Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. Because we, when, we when we encounter patients who have stroke and other... Sometimes I wonder, are they aware that they're doing that? Or are they... they can they see themselves doing that but can't, but can't control? Uh, no, I can say no. No, no. Uh-huh. I can, oh, uh. And we cannot oh. even control it. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. We don't even know what to control. Mm-hmm. See? Yeah. Right. So, kailangan, kaya kailangan talaga when you're a, a, a physical therapist of someone who had some neurologic event, kailangan talaga, you have to understand where they're coming from. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, naumpisa natin ng... Uh, Actually, understanding me is not a word. It's not a word for that. <laughs> ano po dapat? Huh? Ano po dapat? Then understanding. He needs to blend in. Blend in. Yeah. Kailangan sakyan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Kailangan sakyan niya ako tapos hindi siya dapat mahulog. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Dapat makipagsabayan para yung ano niya, yung um, interaction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You Harmonious. jump, I jump high. Mm-hmm. 
Ayan. Kasi kung kunwari na um, hindi match yung personality with certain, ano eh, he would actually, he would actually react to it. Ayan. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Kasi sometimes I do wonder na what's going on with, you know, people who have stroke. With, are, are they just watching themselves do that or are they really not in control? So that's amazing. Coming from, you know, mm-hmm. thank you for that perspective, sir. So we Welcome. went. So we mentioned CIMT, Ma'am Arcel, as one of your the uh, interventions that ano that you use. So medyo ano muna, geek muna tayo sa PT side. Um, ano pa ba yung ibang mga principles and interventions that you employed in uh, Sir Louis's inter um intervention and treatment? Oh, thank you for that. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, it's not just for certain. Mm-hmm. My program is a bit different and eclectic in a way because it's a combination of um, uh, motor learning techniques, motor control techniques that is actually fitted for the patient. One in, one including would be the CIMP and um, it's actually my research way back. And um, not all are actually quali- um, qualified to do it. So one criteria that I always see if um, the patient would be would be qualified for such program is that, of course, there's a dedicated person who would monitor the patient. And it's not just a short program. Ilang oras ka, sir, 10 for CIMP? Naalala mo pa? Ilang wow. oras? Wow! <laughs> well, hindi ko makakalimutan yan, actually. Oh, ilang oras? In a day, she makes me do um four hours of CIMT. <laughs> And that's not enough. Hindi pa enough sa kanya yon. She made it six hours. Yeah. Yeah. Eh, marami kaming away nung part na yon, nung phase ng journey niya yon. Um, we started CIMT, I think, mga around um, January, December, January. Kasi that time nakita ko na yung criteria. And the criteria for doing that is, of course, the patient can sit up properly um, for more than 30 minutes. And then there's like active movement of the wrist and fingers ng around 5 to 10 degrees. So the moment na nakita ko na yun and he suffice all the criteria, then sabi ko sa kanya, this will be the part of your rehab that is gonna be difficult. Kasi it will test your patience, your motivation, but if you will just trust the process, then you will be successful. And nangyari naman, kaya at the end of the program, I think it was around one month, uh, we actually we actually ano, had a had a very, very good result. And nakikita nyo naman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ayan, nakikitik na yan, kamay na yan. Mm-hmm. And we actually, and to, com- to commemorate his efforts, we had a mini graduation. <laughs> yeah, my graduation ba tayo? <laughs> my mini graduation kami. So yeah, so um, the intervention really dwelled on focusing on how the brain reacts onto movement and not the other way around. Kasi um, I don't believe on interventions that are passive. Kasi it's not, it's not the condition eh. Right. You have to really retrain the brain again to move. And the only way, one of the ways to, re- to make the brain be trained is to make the patient move by himself. Diba? Kasi the more you don't move that part, the more you lose it. Tama, diba? <laughs> diba? Tama, tama, tama. Pag pinabayaan mo, magtatampo yan. So parang ganun. So anyway, going back. So the intervention is actually um, uh, much, much focused on learning motor control strategies, retraining the brain again, and maximizing the potential of neuroplasticity. Yan. Right. So that, uh, that's, actually the, that's actually the main goal of the physical therapy programs. But when I do neuro rehabilitation, so... Um, there's always an adjunct, the electrotherapy, pero I... Maximizing I, is the perfect word. Yeah. So, pero I don't dwell mo, much on it kasi uh, at the end of the day, it's just um, superficial ang effect. Mm-hmm. So, sure. uh, you, you really need to um, you really need to focus on making that part, making the patient move kasi that will really activate the lost part of the brain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Right. So- <laughs> That's good. That's good. So, Sir Luis, hearing about you know that side ng na physical therapy na with that explanation, when it came to you, when Mom Arsha was applying it to you, were you asking kung para sa anto or were you just like, okay, Arsha, you, you I trust you. 
I'll do what you do. I'll do what you want me to do. Oh yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Trust the process, nga eh. Trust uh -huh. the process. Uh -huh. And I, actually, every time she asks me to do something, uh -huh. yeah, I ask her, mm -hmm. "What is this for? Uh -huh. What are you? What are you? What are you giving? Why are you giving me this CIMT thing? What? Mm -hmm. What? What will I do after this? What can I do after this? Mm -hmm. Hey, mga ganon yung makakainu pala ako ng baso properly, mm -hmm. makakawa ako ng baso properly, mm -hmm. mga ganon. Right. Meron pa, share mo yung ano, share mo sir no, yung mermaid. Yung <laughs> galit sa galit sa mermaid. <laughs> share mo yun. <laughs> Hindi niya na inisihan yung mermaid, pero na nakatulong na malaki sa kanya yun. Tul Sige, ikaw magsabi sir no. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the mermaid thing ito, hindi na ito mag-asawa na ito eh. Yung mga inaanak ko na ito. Yung mermaid thing, tinuruan nila ako kung paano umupo, tsaka okay. tumayo. Gotcha, aha. Uh -huh. so, Every time I sit down, they they tell me to they tell me to oh slowly put put your um hips down mm -hmm. slowly put your hips down so para magsirena ka parang ganon ah 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 nakadikit yung nakadikit yung legs mo mm -hmm. tapos slowly bawa ba ka para magiging mukha ka sirena ah 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 ganon ganon ang process nila eh. pero uh -huh. okay yon okay yon safe ah uh -huh. <laughs> Nakakatayo, nakakaupo lang ako sa sahig eh. Yes. Kahit itulak-tulak siya at malaglag siya sa sahig, <laughs> nakakatayo siya. Di ba? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> itulak-tulak. Grabe naman sa napaka-brutal. <laughs> Or mahulog sa sahig, at least you can get yes. yourself up. Uh, you... one, one practical use of that, pag nalaglag yung cellphone niya sa floor, so hindi niya na pakakawa sa ibang tao siya nang kumukuha. Kasi he was taught how to to get towards the floor and then get up from it. So, mm -hmm. pero we just, we just, I just describe it as a mermaid thing kasi nga parang, uh -huh. <laughs> that's one of just the possession. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tama, tama. Nung, nung, nung in-explain nga ni Sir, ni Sir Luis about that, oh, 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 mermaid nga, no? <laughs> tama, tama. Uh, pag nahulog ako, kaya akong pulutin yung sarili ko. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right, right. Ay, ay, and nga nga eh, yung, yung, Um, getting up from the floor. Pina-practical siya sa school eh. Pero sometimes hindi natin na-apply with our clients or, or with our patients. Which is really important nga naman. Kasi hindi natin masasabi na, na that patients or clients would not fall. There might be a time that they would fall and it it would be um, very helpful for them na to, to, to know how to get up. Tama naman, di ba? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. All right, so um, I've also seen in, in the videos that uh, Mom, Mom Steph, uh, a sports uh, mm. science uh, uh, professional. Sports science. Uh -huh. So, paano naman napasok si Mom Steph in, in the in your recovery? Yes. Uh, okay. Marcel, paso. Yeah, I'll answer to that. So, Mom Steph is a very good friend of mine. And um, mm -hmm. we've been collaborating also with some of my patients. Mm -hmm. Well, um, apparently, I'm not... I'm not not that expert now with regards to sports. Mm -hmm. okay? I don't bike, okay? And um and <laughs> diba? ano malay ko yan, okay? so, Me too. I, so I think my my part um as his physical therapist needs to be stepped up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's the time I collaborated with uh, Mom Steph, okay? Mm -hmm. Because the the next part of his journey, because it's long term goal, na many right. stories cycling and that that's why um it's very um uh, it's very fitting to invite someone who's really an expert on it mm -hmm. so now that now recently the part we're in um we're, we're still continuing his rehabilitation and all mm -hmm. that um much complicated program has is being uh, has been uh, has been added because um we really wanted to we really wanted to um get his ultimate goal which is cycling yeah mm -hmm. so Uro, Pinasok namin si Coach Steph um, just just last year, mm -hmm. around October, I think. Yeah, October or... Recently lang, ano? Recently lang. Recently, yeah, recently. And mm -hmm. um, sabi ko kasi kay Coach Steph, um, I think Sir Ten is already prepared to to step up to the mm -hmm. next level. Because um, balance, the basic, the basic thing about postural control, um, uh, endurance, nandun na. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll have to make it a little bit more complicated. Na, mm -hmm. you know. So that's the time. 
I recognize the importance of collaboration with other rehab professionals. Oh, I would like to add sports scientists. Yeah. Sports scientists, so, right. In fact, in fact, ano eh, kumpleto ang rehab team niya. So may physiatrist, may PT, may OT. Hindi ka lang nag-speech, no? Sir, sir, ah, hindi lang ako nag-speech. Oh. Ay, wala na. Okay. And sports scientist. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Kamala Marie, like when our, our goal is to really integrate into back to community, back to uh, previous level of function, sometimes hindi natin na uh, kayang, ano yun, ma, ma i, i dala doon with our own uh with our own skills and uh, set uh pero yun nga it is important to collaborate with other professionals to you know to really reach that goal for that patient mm-hmm. so sir sir Luis yung ano uh, how are you now um i saw in in the photos that you're already biking na diba parang august yeah. 20, 2021 you were already starting biking it's good less than one year after your stroke after the AVM. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, if I'm going to put it in percentage, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I, I should say 99.99% recovered now. Mm-hmm. Right. Nice. It's just my vision and my numbness. Mm-hmm. That's not healed yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And Which, almost... No, I have to say there's no therapy for that. Wow. Yeah, we we just have to wait usually for that. Yeah, yeah, to wait. It may or may not come back, but diba? Tama ba ako, Ma'am Ma- Marshall? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, sabi ko nga sa kanya, uh, we've, we've, we've done a lot of um, possible things for his recovery. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, matutusukin ko yung mata mo. Alin ko ba? Anyway, so uh, again, part of the rehabilitation as a, a as a practitioner as well as you also need to recognize what are some of the things that can be directly resolved. To. Mm-hmm. So, so kailangan na ng ano matinding faith. <laughs> Malay nyo, baka we haven't explored yet mm-hmm. uh, interventions, but right now, um, right now, I think certain has really adjusted despite of the current limitations that he had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, Nakakatawa that you're almost, uh, you know, you've got back to your recreational leisure activity, so you're normal. Yeah. Uh-huh. Nice. Trust the process. Trust the process. Mm-hmm. So, Sir, Sir, uh, Sir Luis, what would be your message to people who may be undergoing uh, similar experiences as you? Uh, my message to you, my message to the people who's going through where I've been, mm-hmm. um, I'm not going to lie to you. It's really hard. Mm-hmm. Going through this process is really, 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 really hard. I mean, kumbaga, sabi nila, dadaan ka sa butas ng karayom. This, this one, dadaan ka sa tatlong butas ng karayom. Okay. Well, that's the truth. Uh-huh. Like it. And you need a lot of patience uh-huh. for this. And obviously, it's just normal that you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna, there's gonna be a lot of questions. Questions to God or to yourself, like, why me? Why me? Why, why did this happen to me? Etc. Etc. But you you need to speak to someone who's in in your who's in the same in just in the same situation as you. You need to speak to a person who has AVM too or something like that, or has stroke. Um, that will help in your confidence and to answer your questions too. Um, yeah, and there's there's no one else who can heal, make yourself better or heal yourself except yourself. That's it. That's the only way. Even if you have a lot of money or if even if you have the best PT in the universe or you are a millionaire, it's not gonna it's not gonna help you get better if you don't want if you don't help yourself. Get better. You just need to. You just need to, you know, 
you just need to trust the process again trust the process and and yeah um what else uh, yeah keep the faith be strong you know and no you can i mean if i can you can too you know right. you know well that's it that's it really right. it's not easy mm -hmm. it's not easy but, but you can do it mm -hmm. and you will do it you must do it right that's all so as no excuses no excuses right and also sinabi niyo rin you know you know what your goal was as well you know what your trying to reach that would that mm -hmm. helped you as well because seeing what you want to reach seeing your goal and, and knowing yeah. that you want to achieve that that helped as well nice all right so mom Archel, what is what would be your message for pts who are you know managing uh patients that, that have oh. like neurological symptoms like this okay like mom, um, being, yeah being a neuro pt is also tough because mm -hmm. really there are so many things you need to consider. And not just neurologic conditions, there could be added, um, added um, additional conditions like cardiovascular and so on and so on. So there are a lot of things really needed to be considered. But at the end of the day, it's it's our patient who should be our main priority. I think um, in our profession, it's a, it's, um, a 40, 60, 40, 60 ratio wherein 40 would be coming from us, the knowledge, the skills and all. And then 60 will be a patient first pre patient factor. So we really have to make the patient understand why they are going through the process as the, at the same time, making sure that they really they really see the outcome of what you are what you are doing. Um, prior to starting a program, since I'm a teacher, I always make sure that they understand what they are doing. And at the same time, I also tend to involve the family because, again, at the end of the day, it's going to be the family who will be with the patient all the time. Tayo kasi minsan, one and a half hour lang and all. So um, it's, it's a collaborative effort from the, from the rehab professionals and the family. Kaya I always say that it's a 40-60 ratio. So Very remember, important support. Yeah. Family. Very important, very important. Because I, I agree, no? I agree with certain. Even though you have the program, but yet the patient um doesn't maximize what's um what's the purpose of it. So we won't be meeting halfway. That's why I'm very lucky and blessed to be meeting certain as my patient. Because. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think it was a it was the perfect recipe for recovery. Uh, I mean, at I mean, natin no sa physical therapy sa kurso na sa profession natin. It's ano eh? It's like putting a little a little dose of faith kung gagaling or hindi yung pasyente. Eh. Mm -hmm. Pero eto um I'm I'm happy that um we were able to achieve the ultimate long term goal in less than a year. Because nga Ano eh, magaling din yung pasyente. Ayun naman. Saka... And he really follows instructions. Lahat ng mga sinasabi ko, sinusunod niya. And kahit wala kaming therapy, um, he really oh, not does... before, not before. Uh, no, really... yes. Yeah. He really does things on his own. For example, we had therapy like for one hour papahinga lang siya. So, tutuloy ulit siya kahit wala kang therapy. So, I guess, again, that is um, one of the greatest thing that happened in, the, in his journey to recovery. There is, in fact, an ultimate collaboration between patient and physical therapist and um, the rest of the rehabilitation professional. So, my message for, for my fellow PTs, no, um, one thing is that you have to put yourself, your patient's shoes. What do they need? Okay. And then, of course, you also need to, you also need to balance what's the current dynamics within the family. Because with that, you can really understand 
if um uh, you can really understand the goal of your patient and again um we have to think outside the box you, your creativity is your limit so um you have to be dynamic and um open to change yeah okay and and for the patients um, my, my, my message someone for my patients um again don't forget it's a 40 60 ratio 40% may be coming from your profession for your um, carers and then 60% will be a patient perspective and a big part of it will be you Yon. okay and of course the family there you okay. go <laughs> right. very very good so um, we're nearing the end thank you very much to the both of you Sir Luis for, for giving us a perspective Welcome. of uh, someone who's receiving at the receiving end of physical therapy our, our main stakeholders what we do are is really like for you guys, uh, our education, our skill, our, our you know, our, our attitudes, and uh, Mam Archa for sharing the man, you know, what what your take on collaboration with patient and family. So it's 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 uh, nice to hear about you know a good good relationship between patients and physical therapists because sometimes as physical therapists we kind of lose touch already with our humanity sometimes because we, we've been seeing a lot of patients na parang minsan we, we get numb already na parang we just see patients are pa as patients or are as what their conditions are and we forget that they are unique they have their own lives that they have their own goals so yun ang kailangan hindi natin mawawala pag tayo ako tinesco tinesco talaga yan <laughs> na test si Ma'am Marcel. <laughs> mm, tinest ko talaga. <laughs> so, yun. So, we really have to, as you, as you said, Ma'am, na we really have to put ourselves in, into the patient's shoes. Ano yung kailangan nila? Ano yung gusto nilang ma-achieve? Alright, so, before I let you go, um, I just have one last bite for you guys. Um, hindi na to about, uh, ano, uh, Patient PT collaboration, but it's about just you. Um, Siguro, let's start with Mom Archel. Um, <laughs> what are the three ingredients? Uh, it can be your your characteristic, can be your motto in life that you carry with you every day that you feel are essential. So, in short, what are the three things that make up Mom Archel? Oh, okay. Um, uh, I'm creative. Mm -hmm. I see things on a different way and um I <laughs> and um I always yeah so number one is creative mm -hmm. uh, I always see things on a different way and um, number two I always ensure that there would be fun in mm -hmm. everything that we that we do because mm -hmm. Pag nawala yung essence of fun, everything's gonna get boring. Mm -hmm. and, right. Yeah. And, and number three, I think um I have a I have I have I have placed a lot of faith. Yeah, mm -hmm. parang I'm faithful in everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> 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 okay. Sir Luis, Sir Luis, your turn. What are the three things, wedding behavior, attitude, motto in life that you carry with you every day that you feel are essential? In short, what are the three things that make up Sir Luis? Uh, perseverance, number mm -hmm. one. You need to be persevere in everything. That, and you need to be, oh, dedication. You mm -hmm. need to be dedicated in everything that you do. Mm -hmm. Um, ingredients. Uh, you know, you, again, you have to trust the process. Mm -hmm. Trust the process. You're not going to go anywhere. If you don't trust the process, you're not going to go anywhere. Stubborn, stubborn. Stubborn, stubborn. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <no> <laughs> so right. dapat, trust the process, trust, you know, mm -hmm. trust the PT rin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trust the RCL, kahit na, kahit na ganun, di ba? <laughs> <laughs> you know, trust the process. Mm -hmm. Minsan nga may pinapagawa sa, may may ginagawa, may kailangan akong gawin, ano? Outside um, session namin. You know, I ask, I'll ask her, 
Pwede ko pang gawin to? Pwede ko pang gawin to? Pwede ko pang gawin to? Ganyan. If she tells me, yeah, kayang-kaya mong gawin yan, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Without having second thought. Mm-hmm. I'll do it. Pag sinabi niya sa akin, yeah, kaya mong gawin yan. I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Again, Iba talaga yun. Process, perseverance, mm-hmm. and motivation, and dedication. Right. Iba and, talaga nagagawa ng trust. And may I also add, you have to do all, you have to put some effort in breaking barriers. Breaking barriers? Yeah. Breaking barriers, yeah, yeah. Galing. Galing. <laughs> you have to keep breaking barriers. You have to keep break barriers. Mm-hmm. All right. Perfect, perfect. Perseverance, dedication, and trusting the process. Again, thank you very much for the both of you for here, for coming over here in this podcast and sharing your experiences with us. As a uh, takeaway, yung last pabao natin sa ating mga audience, last statements. Uh, what is that one thing that you want the audience to take away from our conversation? Short lang, uh, Sir Luis. Um, um, believe in what you can do. And believe in God, obviously. He's always there. He's not gonna leave. Okay. Footprints in the sand, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, believe, believe in yourself. I mean, if I can, you can too. You know. Right. In lang. I mean, that's it. Okay. Thank believe you. that you can break believe. barriers, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trust in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe in God. Yeah. All yeah. right. And mom. Yeah, ako, um, I always say, not just for my patient, but also for myself and um, uh, my students and all, you always have to find meaning in everything what you, in everything that you do because um, that will make, make you um, definite of what you wanted to, end, to, to, to achieve in the end. And during the process, you have to learn how to enjoy it. Because yeah. if you don't love what you're doing, then it's not it's not gonna be beneficial so yeah loving what we do and um learning how to learning how to trust the process eventually yeah that's my main takeaway all right again thank you very much for being the show and sharing your your experiences your wisdom both of you for uh, to our audience you're welcome.